Happy New Year and welcome back to Watching Film and Varnador Films. I am Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach. Now I break down film here on YouTube uh, with a particular emphasis on the Florida Gators. There's uh, I, I wanted to wait till the calendar turned over to make this video um, just to see kind of what happened with the transfer portal and what happened with Florida's quarterback situation. Um. And as of recording, there's still things happening with the Florida quarterback situation. So uh, I think some of those things may be decided by the time ad drop comes around, but that's not for a couple of days, I believe. So let's go ahead and get into it. I, I, I took a look at uh, Graham Mertz, uh, Florida's transfer portal quarterback edition. Uh, Mertz played at Wisconsin. For three years, had three different coordinators, three different, uh, three different uh, quarterback coaches, I believe. I didn't think he got a ton of help from his supporting cast in his scheme, but he also has some issues himself. So we're going to take a look at uh, what he does well, or, or that's what he showed uh, last year. We I got four games, uh, two good ones from him. Um, Purdue and Northwestern, he played pretty well in both those games. And then we've got Ohio State and Iowa. Those are two games where he did not play particularly well um, to varying degrees. So we'll take a look at those, see what he does well, see what he did poorly last year, and see if those are things that uh, can be improved on or if that's kind of what he is. That's uh, I think that's going to be the big question with him. Is, this, is, is he what he has shown at Wisconsin? So let's take a look. Um, It'll be kind of quick, just some examples. I don't have every single throw of his. I don't have the all 22. Just pulled some stuff from highlights and TV copies and things like that. So let's take a look here at Graham Mertz. All right, we'll start with a couple of throws in the quick game. Here is a, a, a throw in the quick game, but also kind of a decent example of uh, maybe his supporting cast. So they're just going to run. They've got the orbit motion. So this is something that looks probably familiar to Florida fans. Safety vacates with the motion, rolls back to the middle. So you got a one on one for a slant out here. Pretty good throw. Probably got to be caught. Receiver has it knocked away, but not bad. Maybe could have been quicker here. Maybe get that thing out a little quicker, but not a bad throw on target. Another quick game throw, this time under center. Mertz is an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting story. A really highly regarded quarterback coming out of high school. He was never under center in high school at all. Um, from what I read, he was always in the shotgun. He wanted to go to Wisconsin to learn pro-style offense under center. Uh, maybe that was a poor misunderstanding of where the NFL game was going, but he wanted to be able to get under center, so he went to Wisconsin. So, so it seems like a, a match not exactly made in heaven for either party. Uh, Mertz, here you have a little RPO throw. They didn't do this a ton. For being such a heavy run team, so here's a read right there. You see he's got eyes right there. Outside release, getting back underneath. For being such a heavy run team, Wisconsin did not utilize a ton of play action and RPO. In fact, coming into this, you see there are two and three coming into this Northwestern game, so five games into the year. They'd attempted nine passes off play action the whole season. Mertz was six for nine. They attempt ten in this game. He goes seven for ten off play action. So uh, I think he can be a pretty effective passer off play action. There's off the RPO action. Um, here's some drop back throws. He's got some arm talent. He can he can push the ball outside here. He's got the propensity, and we'll see later on. But here's a drop back, puts it on a guy. So this is something that looks, you know, kind of innocuous. But go back and watch Florida running mesh and things like that, right? So you got kind of it looks like probably a drive concept here. Go back and watch Florida run mesh and see how many times these crossers. Last year, got the ball out in front where the guy could catch and run. A lot of times, the throws were slowing him down. So that's, you know, it's important to place the ball there. You see, this guy's got the catch and run ability. Also, you know, they're playing Northwestern. That makes it a little bit easier. 
Uh, but good placement on this throw on the shallow. Another drop back against Northwestern. He's got some ability. You can see he can spin it pretty well. Not every highlights against Northwestern, I promise. It's uh, <laughs> he did that was one of his probably his best game of last year. You can see here he works the dig. You watch his eyes. So they got a concept down at the bottom. Works it here, gets this kind of cleared out for this dig coming this way. And you'll see it even better from the end zone view. Which should be right here. So again, working his eyes here. He knows working that way should leave a hole right here. You see right there, eyes to the look into his left. Bang, comes back to the dig over the middle. Great ball placement. Again, allow the guy to catch and run. And, uh, and one more time, this is against Northwestern. So here's against Iowa. Dropping back again, getting some pressure. You see the pass protection there. This is another one where he uses his eyes. Starts out, kind of holds, tries to hold the safety. Finds it. Safety rotates to the middle of the field here. Able to beat the corner. And then, but watch the pass protection here. The back steps up, gets blown back into his feet, able to step up and make the throw here for the touchdown. And we'll see it from the back angle here. You get a pretty good view again of his eyes. So he does some. He does some kind of see eyes looking here initially, or, or really kind of looking at this safety. He sees the safety open this way. He knows I've got the one-on-one -on -one back here. Bang, foot in the ground, find it. Maybe he could have thrown it without the extra hitch. I think that's something that maybe he'll he'll need to work on a little bit is, is speeding himself up in terms of that ball can come out. You don't need an extra hitch. Don't be late. And you'll see that comes back to bite him. But he can, like you know, he can layer the ball over the top. So this is a throw, you know, over – these second level defenders there to the back of the end zone. He's got some, as they like to say, arm talent. And he does some, I think he tries, or he was trying to do some kind of next level things. Um, his issue is just consistency. He's not super consistent. So right here, this, this is when you, when you think of Wisconsin, you think of their great offensive lines of the past. This is not that group. Uh, this was not a great offensive line. You see Iowa kind of had him on his back foot all day. This is a pretty good job, but watch the anticipation here. Look at the ball's thrown now. This is who he's throwing to, not even out of his break yet. Good placement, right? So there's times where you watch you go, okay, like I, I, I get it. Right there, watch when the ball is thrown. The throw started there. Look where the receiver's at. And look at the placement on the ball right there. Juggled and dropped. So there's times where it's like, man, he can do some things. Look at that. I mean, anticipating that. Here's another one he kind of anticipates. This is where, you know, the protection issues. You see this guard get beat here. And again, look, he's throwing this thing. The ball's out of his hand. This guy has not gotten out of his break yet. And yeah, was it thrown with some, well, did he float it in there? Yeah, but he kind of anticipated the receiver would be, threw it to the spot, let him get there. You know, that's what, when, when Florida was so good at throwing the ball in the 90s, those guys knew where those receivers were going to be. They threw to spots, they, were, they anticipated throws. That's kind of the big next level stuff. And then he's good. He's good on movement throws. So right here, this is kind of a mix here of kind of moving in anticipation, kind of the if he's even, he's leaving principle. You're going to have a kind of a flood look. That should be not too foreign to Florida fans. We'll go back to this view. So you have a deep corner, kind of a deep out, and then in the flat here. So flood three level concept. Florida runs a ton of it, right? 
by the time this throws made, this guy it looks like that guy's wide open, right? Easy to read. He does a pretty good job here, and you'll see it. But when when he's deciding to make this throw, it's kind of hazy, right? But he's started to turn, so he knows I can throw it over his head into the end zone here. So he sees him coming down, throw it over his head, let him run to it. Pretty good job right there by him. Here's more movement here. Get out of the pocket. Here's a little savvy. Just put it on the guy's body. Give him a chance. Scores a touchdown right there. Rolling him again. Hitting the corner out. So he's not, I, I think, I, you see people say he's not really athletic at all. I think he has some athleticism. Uh, he's not, he's obviously not Richardson. He's not the guy you just had. But he can he can move enough. He he can kind of run. You know, if you need a guy that can throw on the run, play action boot type stuff, I think he's a guy that can do that. And it certainly seems like that's a big part of the Florida offense is is throwing off those boots and those kind of roll concepts. And he's he's shown he can do that. Off play action, here's good the score the score uh is not great, but this is on here just for you know, ball handling, flipping your hips, getting the ball out, accurate ball, even on play action, drop it in there. The guy's wide open, but kind of a ball handling thing. Here's play action, looking for an intermediate route coming across, and this is something I think he does a pretty good job at, which is bizarre that they weren't a more heavy play action team with how much they run the ball at Wisconsin, but they weren't. There's another kind of intermediate. You see him as soon as. Right, the safety rotates here to the middle. He's got eyes on the safety. So he knows as he's rotating there, I got a vertical here. As soon as he clears this backer, I can throw it. So he's got eyes. He clears the backer, puts it on him in that seam right there. Another kind of intermediate throw here off the play action. This off of kind of a, a nice, uh, another kind of flood look, go, corner or, or sail, some people call it flat, right, corner bails, put it on, and there's the flat defender coming, trying to get underneath it. With a play action. It's a deep dig over the second level defender. So there, there's times where you see him, he kind of layer, he can layer the ball over top of guys in front of the third level. There's some good stuff. This one's just easy. And this is what, if you're a heavy run team, this is what you need to be able to do. Sell that play action, get backers to bite up, and then get guys open over the top. Florida was able to do that a little bit this year. Wisconsin didn't do a great job with that. There's a deep comeback right there off play action. The Iowa game was interesting. He, uh, I, I didn't get every play. Uh, here's a good job of him moving in the pocket. He, he's kind of like everything with him. It's inconsistency. Sometimes he'll look great moving in the pocket right here, steps up, gets out, finds a, finds a receiver in that intermediate area for a big play. Here's another time where he's kind of maneuvers the pocket. Gets vertical and then a nice little touch throw here. This is not an easy throw, but this is a good job of climbing the pocket and then getting out and then dropping it with some nice touch over the top of defenders to the, all the open space. To me, this is, even though he, he ends up completing this, this is kind of uh, – this is the bad sometimes. And it, it, I believe it's partly because his protection wasn't great all year. I don't think he needs to move as much as he does right here. Bang, step up. Right here, he kind of starts moving around. And then he gets himself to where he's having to throw off platform here, right? You don't want to throw off platform unless you have to. He ends up completing it. But this, these are the kind of things that I think come back to bite him at times. Right here again, move up in the pocket, find your receiver outside. Good job. That's all good stuff. Uh, and then here's just a nice little play, a little, little savvy. Step it up in the pocket and find your back, flipping it to him, getting yourself a good play. 
Um, you know, and then here's some of the, you know, he's not an elite athlete. I'd say he's average, slightly above average, not a statue, but not a guy that you're going to design. I don't, I don't think a guy you're going to design a ton of runs for maybe a keep uh, a little bit to keep you honest, but he, he's not a statue back there. He, he can move a little bit, but he's not, yeah, this is not a uh, Cam Newton back there. You know, I thought his supporting cast let him down at times, not only up front, but the play calling. You see how often they're in. Um, there are some great um, some great numbers put out. JP Gator on uh, the Gators Breakdown Discord, if you're in there, he put out some great numbers on how many times Merch had to throw on third down. And it seemed like he was throwing on third down as a higher percentage than almost anybody in the country. Uh, and I think Swamp Stats on Twitter also put out something similar. Uh, another a good follow on Twitter there, Swamp Stats. But not only is your offensive line poor, they called a ton. <laughs> if it was third and long, they're calling vertical a ton of vertical routes. You know, you you want to obviously you want to have routes get past the sticks, but almost every I mean they're calling like four verts on almost every it seems like on almost every third and long. So if you can't protect and people blitz. You've got no hot routes. You, it doesn't seem like guys aren't breaking anything off. And here's a couple where right here, good job. Not a heavy rush. Well, they're climbing the pocket. And that's a good throw. Your receiver just kind of short arms it here, thinking he's going to get hit and drops it. But that's a good, I mean, that's a good on the move. Third and six, that's a play that needs to be made right there by your receiver. Here's one third and nine. You see there's not a ton of separation. Pretty good placement on this throw right here. Receiver can't hang on. It hits off his hands from the end zone. You can kind of see it hit his hand there. So pretty good placement, but no separation. And then here on fourth and three, this one goes right through the wicket. It looks like the safety makes a play on it, but he the, he gets there after the ball. The ball just goes through this guy's arms, hits off his uh, his lower abdomen, or really off his thigh. But the ball goes – see the ball's right here coming right down. It goes right through his arms, off his knee for an incompletion. And then there's – like this is – all right, so third and seven – you're only putting three guys out in the route. They're bringing a ton of guys. I mean, they're breaking routes off at like 20. This is seven yards, so they're breaking routes off at, you know, almost he's breaking this off at 20 back down to 17 on third and seven. Uh, and they're bringing, a, <laughs> they're bringing blitz. That's not a great recipe for a quarterback. So uh, I don't think he got a ton of help either. This isn't to say he was great, but how many of these third downs are they running – so many guys vertical and you're not getting protection. It's, it's bizarre. And then I think there are times where guys ran wrong routes and he, he was, didn't know, but it was, you can see the protection here. The guards already whiffed. He's beat. The ball's just been snapped. You get sacked. And then look, it's third and 13. Nobody, there's one guy turning and looking back and that's the back the check that got out on it, like a check release. Nobody else is even looking back for the ball. So not a great real recipe for success. I don't think, but that's not his only issue. He's got some moments of inaccuracy and you'll see these here. You got, looks like you got verticals. Number three coming across just misses him. Misses high. Steps up. Delivers just misses. This is a – he's long here, and there's also not a ton of separation, but misses long. This one, you, you know, you put it on him, you got a chance here. If you put it on him when he breaks out, bad miss it looks like. Then here you try to force it. 
you kind of assume that that, that middle guy is going to be open. It's third and 10. Probably check this one down here to see if you can get – see if this guy can turn and run, but you kind of force it in here. Same thing. Leave it. You leave this one too far inside. You maybe have a chance if you throw this thing outside. All right, if this thing's thrown out here, let him run to it. You got a chance. Leave it inside. Allows this defensive back to get a hand on it, and then an interception to be made off of the play, right? Now, maybe you could say your, your receiver maybe needs to come back and fight for that a little more, but he's running to the corner. You just can't miss inside. He's got all the momentum coming there. Easy for him to get a hand on that thing. So can't miss that one. Third and four here. Come back. Now, again, there's not a ton of separation here. You're running, it's third and four. You're running 20 yard comebacks, but not a good throw. Totally, you miss. It's not, you don't even really give your receiver a chance. And maybe he, maybe he thought he was going to get picked and he just threw it away, but that's a pretty bad throw. The fact that it's kind of an argument of whether he was throwing this away or not, uh, that's concerning, right? This one just misses. So it, there's there's a lot of good, but there's a lot of this kind of stuff where um, here he's try tries to anticipate this throw, throw it a little early. But I'm I'm guessing here that this is supposed to be kind of a, a Mills type quarters beater where he's going to try to drag this guy, and then they're going to run like a post behind it. And it looks like the receiver's starting to maybe break in here, which is probably where you want to throw it. He tries to, he kind of throws this before he breaks. You see, he's starting to throw and misses it totally off the mark, right? Misses it back here. You probably want this throw in here. Tried him to anticipate, but, but was inaccurate. Here, try to take a deep shot. Again, this is. Short, you know, maybe, maybe this is, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to throw it short get the guy to come back the old interference play, but pretty short on that go route here. And then here on these, you know, I, I think he's a little late on this one. He's able to kind of throw it around this uh, nickel or linebacker, whoever's here. You got the go route. He turns and runs. As soon as you see his back, you know that I'm coming here. Now, again, not a ton of separation created right there, but that ball needs to be coming out. All right, as soon as I see three's back, I know I'm coming down to here. So I, that ball's got to be ready to come out. Maybe a little late. Again, no separation, but you'll see how similar play here. Tries to throw it late, an outbreaker. And he also does the thing where Maybe he kind of runs himself into having to throw off platform instead of just kind of just kind of want a small step in the pocket here, right? He kind of throw, throws it almost like he's on the run here in traffic because he didn't really set his feet and kind of move in the pocket. Uh, great there. Compounds that with being late here and throws a backbreaker. Pick six. And then this one is uh, one of the more egregious looking ones. I don't, this one's so bad. I don't know if it's even his fault. That's kind of how bad this miss is. He's throwing this like he expects this guy to curl up or really break down and, and not roll out of this cut. And you'll see it from the other view. As soon as he throws the ball and he sees the guy break out, he's he kind of claps his hands like, oh, crap. Uh, but I don't know if it's that's because it was such a bad throw or if because this guy's supposed to curl. So maybe he thinks he's supposed to curl, and I'm going to throw it to him right here, and then when he breaks out, well, now that's easy. Or he wasn't supposed to curl, and this is just a really bad miss, right? You want to throw the ball out here. I think you even have Herb Street telestrate this one later. Yeah, there's Herbie. 
Yeah, you want to throw that thing out there. And so I don't I don't know if he thought he was gonna curl. You can see as soon as he throws it, he's like, oh no. So did he think he was gonna curl or is that just a really bad ball? I don't know. We'll say it was just a really bad ball. So uh it's he's an interesting kid. I could see why you would take him if if you're Florida. They, there is some upside. There is some stuff he can do that maybe you think, all right, when he gets in our system with our things, we can take advantage of his strengths and and do some things. But I also, you know, when he was first taken, I to me this it signaled like, all right, they want to make sure they get somebody, but they might go big game hunting later. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. You have a guy like Hartman go. Uh, to Notre Dame, he was kind of rumored for Florida. Pratt was a big rumor from Tulane, stays there. Grayson McCall, I think he, I would be interested to see if he jumps back in the portal. I think he may um, – my guess would be he needs to be a graduate transfer. So if he can graduate this semester from Coastal, I bet he'd get back in the portal after spring football. Uh, maybe Florida would take a run if they don't like what they see from Mertz. But Mertz is a guy that – I think has potential, but it's really, is he just a guy that will never meet that potential? He's got some arm talent. He can make a lot of throws, uh, but he's got some things he needs to fix. And he's played for three years, so you got a lot of film on him. You understand kind of what he is. I think he was limited by a supporting cast and by uh, the scheme, and that'll be better at Florida. But, you know, is he what he is? Is 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 he just, you know, was the scheme poor because they couldn't put a lot on him? Those are the stuff you don't really know till you get a guy on campus and in and, and practice and things like that. So Florida will find out. I think they'll have a pretty good idea what they have with him in spring. He's got some talent, but obviously not without some risk. A lot of inconsistency. If he can iron out the inconsistency, I think he can be a guy that you can win games with. Uh, I don't think he'll be an elite guy but he'll be a guy that can win you some games. If he's not able to iron out those inconsistencies and he kind of stays what he is, he'll win you some games. He might lose you some too by throwing those picks you saw, some pick sixes. So um, I don't know. This will be a really interesting case. I think uh, Florida, from a quarterback development standpoint, if they're able to bring him in and have a ton of success, that's a great recruiting tool in the future. Um, If not – and he's the only quarterback you bring in, you're going to be relying on some young guys to play uh, in the coming years, I think. So an interesting take by Florida should be interesting to follow. Uh, but, you know, this guy's got some talent. It's just, can he put it all together? And I don't know if he can. So uh, if you like this video, subscribe. Uh, com- leave a comment, like all that good stuff. Uh, let's game this YouTube algorithm together. Thanks for watching.